In this lesson, we're going to discuss how we can use trigonometry to find missing angles within right triangles. So in our first example here, you'll notice that you're asked to determine the value of x, which is this missing angle down here in this right triangle. Now if we look from that x degree angle, we're given the side length of 7, which is on the leg that's opposite to that x degree angle. So we'll label that with O for opposite. We're also given the side length of 5, which is on the leg that's adjacent to that x degree angle. So we'll label that with A for adjacent. Now let's remember our three trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Again, SOHCAHTOA. It's a helpful way to remember how those three trig ratios work within a right triangle. Now in this diagram, it looks like we have the opposite and adjacent legs looking from that angle of x degrees, while opposite and adjacent is the ingredients of the tangent ratio. So what we can say is that the tangent of that x degree angle equals 7 over 5, which is opposite over adjacent. So we've just created an equation. There's only one unknown, but the unknown this time is an angle. Our goal here is to solve for an angle. Now, to get x by itself, there's no such thing as dividing by tangent on both sides. It would be like dividing by square root on both sides. However, the good news is, is that we can use the inverse of tangent on both sides of this equation. In fact, if you look on your calculator above the sine, cosine, and tangent keys, you'll see these symbols sine with a little minus one, cosine with a little minus one, and tangent with a little minus one. Those are what are called the inverse trig functions. And in fact, the way you say them is actually sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. So it's important to write down how you'd say those accurately. Not sine to the minus 1, you actually would say sine inverse. So to get x by itself here, what we can use is the inverse tangent on both sides of this equation. We can apply the inverse tangent function to get x by itself. So to emphasize the solving, I'm going to rewrite this original equation. Tangent of x equals 7 fifths. And I'm also going to leave some space in front of the 7 fifths. So to get x by itself here, what we'll do is the inverse of tangent. We'll apply the inverse tangent function to both sides of this equation. Now what happens on the left-hand side is that inverse tangent and tangent end up undoing each other when you're left with just x. And on the right-hand side, we have to take the inverse tangent of 7 fifths. Now in a minute, I'll show you how to call this up on the calculator, but what we'll get for x is that x is approximately 54.462 degrees. So if you have to undo a trig function to get an angle by itself, you'll be using these inverse trig functions of sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tangent inverse. Whenever you have to find the value of a missing angle, like in this equation up here, tangent of x is 7 fifths, you can expect to use the in appropriate inverse trig function. So let's go through how to use the inverse trig functions on our graphing calculator. Again, very important to make sure you're set up in the right mode. So let's press the mode button. And we'll make sure we're in degree mode again. You know, it's the third line down. You want to make sure degrees is highlighted just like we have here. And once you're sure you're set to degree mode, we'll quit out. So second, quit. We'll figure out how to type in the inverse tangent of 7 fifths, like we had to do in that first example. So you'll notice that inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent are listed in blue above the sine, cosine, and tangent keys, which means to call them up, we'll have to press the second key up here. And then we'll call up inverse tangent, because that's what we used in that example. And we took the inverse tangent of 7 fifths. So again, you want to make sure you press that second key and that you're calling up inverse tangent here. Not tangent, but inverse tangent. And let's see, the inverse tangent of 7 fifths, our calculator will tell us that answer that we set of 54.462 degrees. So again, whenever you're finding that missing angle measure, typically you're going to be using inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. You want to call up second and then whatever the appropriate inverse trig function is. In our next example, we're asked to determine the angle measures in a 512-13 triangle. Now right off the bat, you'll recognize that 512-13 is one of the Pythagorean triples that we've been dealing with for a while. 
which means this triangle that we're looking at is definitely a right triangle. So let's sketch a diagram for this 5, 12, 13 right triangle. We know that opposite the 90 degree angle would be 13, it's the hypotenuse. And let's say this leg is 5 and this leg is 12. Now one of the missing angles is definitely the 90 degree angle. We already know that, it's a right triangle. But we have to find this missing angle measure here, which is x, and this missing angle measure up here, which is y. So let's see, this problem has many different ways we could solve it. Let's say to find this missing angle measure x here, we felt like using the sine ratio. We could definitely do that, because we have both the leg that's opposite to the x degree angle, which is 12, and the hypotenuse, which is 13, given to us. So we could say the sine of x would be 12 over 13, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Now that's hardly the only trig ratio we could have used uh, to find the value of x degrees here. We could have also used the cosine of x degrees, which would be 5 over 13, or even the tangent of x degrees, which would be 12 over 5. Now to solve for x here, like we saw in the last example, we have to use the inverse sine on both sides here. So we're going to rewrite the equation. We'll have sine of x equals 12 thirteenths, and leave ourselves some space in front of that. And to undo sine, we'll do the inverse of sine on both sides here. Again, inverse sine and sine, they undo each other. That'll get the angle measure x by itself, which will be the inverse sine of 12 over 13. So you can input that into your calculator. Again, press second, and then call up the sine button. That'll call up sine inverse, and then type in 12 thirteenths, and you'll find that x is approximately 67.380 degrees. Now, to find the value of this other missing angle up here, which is y degrees, there are many different ways we can do that. And one is to just use the big fact we know about the three angle measures in a triangle that would always sum to 180. Now that we know what x measures, and we know it's a right triangle as well, we could simply just do 180 degrees, take away the 90 degree angle measure, and take away the 67.380 degree angle measure that we just figured out. That's a very good way to find that last remaining angle there, y we would see that y would be approximately 22.620 degrees. Now certainly we could have continued to use trigonometry. If we wanted to find the value of y, we could also just use a trig ratio again. For instance, we could use the tangent ratio. We could say the tangent of y would be the leg opposite to that y degree angle, which is 5 down here to the leg adjacent to it, which is this measurement of 12. So the tangent of y would be 5 over 12. And we could certainly solve that in a way that like, uh, we've been solving our other equations where you have to find an angle um, as our variable. So let's see. Use the inverse tangent this time. I'll say tangent of y equals 5 twelfths. So again, leave space. And we'll use the inverse tangent on both sides here. Again, inverse tangent and tangent undo each other. We'll end up taking the inverse tangent of 5 twelfths to get the value of y. And if you input that into the calculator, you'll notice that the inverse tangent of 5 twelfths is that angle measure we figured out just using basic geometry stuff. We'll find that y again is approximately 22.620 degrees. So again, this is a problem that has many different ways to solve it. Lots of different concepts you could apply here. So to summarize, let's list out the three different angle measures that we found here. The smallest angle measure was 22.620 degrees. The medium angle measure was 67.380 degrees. And the largest angle measure here was 90. Again, we knew that since 5, 12, 13 was a Pythagorean triple. This triangle was definitely a right triangle, which meant it had a right angle in it. To end this lesson, here's a practice question for you to try on your own. You're asked to determine the angles in a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So you'll definitely want to look back at the example that we just went through. This will probably have many different ways you could solve it, but you'll definitely need to use an inverse trig function to find at least one of the acute angles within this right triangle.